Our country wasn't founded on the right of happiness, but rather the right to pursue happiness. That right is what makes America the greatest nation the world has ever known. See that scar right across the top of my hand right there? Ooh. That's a chainsaw. Ooh. Everybody. When I was 20, almost cut that. Feeding, rolls. Could have cut my hand off. Interview and be careful. <laughs> Mark. Hey folks, I'm John Rich and welcome to The Pursuit. You know, the right to pursue happiness in America is not a freedom reserved for the lucky few. It's available to every American, no matter where they live or what their circumstances might be. A few years ago, I learned of a man named Doug Seegers who spent much of his life living homeless on the streets in America, afflicted with severe drug and alcohol addiction, but was also an incredibly gifted singer-songwriter. With a bottle in one hand and a guitar in the other, Doug somehow managed to survive the hostile streets he found himself living in for the majority of his life. Second chances, redemption, and the American dream are the foundations that have led to this incredible story of Doug Seegers. Man, if there was ever a, a, a story of pursuing happiness in America and how important that right is for each and every one of us, you're the story. Well, thank you, John. Tell me about where you grew up. I believe it was in New York, right? Yeah, I was on Long Island, West Islip, Long Island, Suffolk County. My dad left when I was eight years old just to sell him the family. But he left his record collection behind and he left one of his guitars behind. So I kind of picked up a plane just with his old record collection. But I was pretty much in interested in woodworking. I wound up majoring in woodworking in high school and then just took it on as a career. When I'm driving, I pull up to a stop sign and you see a, a homeless person standing there with a sign. This was a little kid growing up, kicking soccer balls, playing baseball, going to school, having dreams and aspirations. I wonder what happened that brought this person to the stop sign I'm sitting at right now. So. What led to you being homeless in our country? I grew up with a stepfather back home in the house who couldn't stand me because I was just extra baggage to him, you know. My mother begged me to finish high school. So once I graduated in 1969 from high school, two days later, I was on the streets of Manhattan living a homeless lifestyle, playing my guitar when I was like 17 years old, 18 wow. years old. So I've been in and out of living that lifestyle all my life, you know. I was busking, basically, you know, playing my guitar on the streets of the Lower East Side mm -hmm. and, you know, running to people like David Peel on the Lower East Side and stuff like that. So standing out there playing Absolutely. music, busking, that's a word I've learned. Yeah, busking. yeah, busking. Yeah. Is a, busking is big now, it's good, really. Yeah. It's, uh, well, when I think back about my life, I've busked before, I just didn't know what to call it when I would stand out there and sing with a guitar case flopped open. I've done that. We'll have to bus together sometime. <laughs> yeah, It'll right. be a, a, a duo busking. I'm getting ready to get out there again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. So when you're out there busking, you're out there playing music on the street, at what point did substances enter? Growing up as a childhood and, and not having the right kind of direction, my, I mean, my dad left when I was eight years old, so me and my older brother probably grew up with a lot of anger as a result of that, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I turned 16 years old, you know, that was my first introduction to drinking and getting drunk and just having a wonderful time, you know? But uh, I guess the addiction slowly got out of hand, you know? But I think it really does stem from, from childhood rearing, you know, and your parents are not, uh, I guess, not doing a good enough job. Or, you know, the abandonment of my dad, my father, and then the bouts with my stepfather, you know, there was a lot of anger and hatred, and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and he was an alcoholic, so there was a lot of alcoholism going on with him and my mother fighting all the time, and it was just a bad, a bad place to be, you know. How does it work being homeless in America? Because if you've never been homeless, that's, there's a lot of questions to that. Well, let me say one thing about homelessness, and that, that is thank God that we're living now rather than back in the 50s, you know, when we had a lot of famine and, 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 and uh, starvation going on, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the homeless person right now, and I'll speak about myself, uh, is that uh, 
It really was never a struggle being homeless. I would get up Monday morning without a penny in my pocket and I'd just walk to the Nashville Rescue Mission because I knew once I got there, everything was taken care of for me. Hmm. Free clothing, free food, free shelter, showers. It was just too easy. I mean, it's almost like like you looked at yourself like rock star homeless a little bit. If I would have been homeless back in the 40s, I would have died. You know, we're in a, a wonderful country with a lot of, lot of help and a lot of support, you know. Do you think there's enough out there that if someone truly doesn't want to be homeless anymore, for the most part, they could pull out of it? Absolutely. A lot of the people down at the Nashville Rescue Mission, they've been homeless for several months and then they get lazy. Mm. So that's kind of like just kind of giving up, you know? Yeah. But for me, it was the spirit of God that, that gave me the strength to, to know that it was just a temporary situation that I was in. Well, this is the embarrassing part of the show here because I'm going to show you folks where I used to live with my girlfriend. One morning, Angela, once she got up and she started sweeping, and she said something to me that I'll never forget. And she said, we got to keep this place clean. This is our home, Doug. And wow. I thought, home, OK. So I'm not homeless. I have a home here. Right there. <laughs> this is where the hole was, right? Right up there I lived. Yeah. Do you recall how long you were living under this bridge? I mean, I was living at the Nashville Rescue Mission for quite a while. And then, you know, when I got tired of being there, that I wanted to get away from all the other homeless people, I would come here as a place of, you know, getting out and being a little bit more free, I guess. When COVID hit, shut everything down, you can't go play music, can't be around your friends and all that positive stuff. Did you feel like some of that, some of the old issues, addictions and stuff, did they start creeping back into your mind? The temptation is is really strong right now. I think the temptation is always going to be there, but so you you just kind of like have to rely on your faith. My faith in God is what keeps me strong and it keeps me away from addictions. Your faith in God's what got you out from under this bridge. If you turn around and you look at this bridge right now, here in, here in 2021, where you're at today, What's, what flashes through your mind? To me, it was something that maybe even made me stronger as a person. And, uh, you know, you take something from your past, you absorb it, you recognize it, and once you see yourself as having gone beyond that, in a way, you want to turn around and try to inspire other people. As you're out there, you're talking about living with your girlfriend under a bridge and on the weekends, let's yeah. go get some drugs and drink and, yeah. you know. Yeah. How, do, how does God make his way through through that cloud? I've always had God in my life, but it's just been a lot of, you know, with the addictions, you know, you kind of have a tendency to, to distance God. You know, you walk away from him because you're too embarrassed to, mm -hmm. to have him think you're about guilty. your lifestyle. One night, I asked God, I said, God, I feel like I'm going to die if I just keep going on this way, you know? Mm -hmm. I asked him for his help, and uh, I woke up the next morning, and I received the miracle from God, and I knew it as soon as I woke up that morning. The Bible teaches us that it's never too late yeah, absolutely. To, to, to submit to, to God, to His will. Yeah. And America says the right to pursue happiness, it's never too late to turn a corner and come back at it and really, you know, fulfill your, your destiny. Mm -hmm.